Good afternoon, everyone. I know everyone is logging in. So we'll give here a few moments. Hopefully everyone is having a great Tuesday already. I'm Brenda Lewis with the Tulsa Chamber. Going to give everyone a few moments to log on. I still see folks getting on, getting their audio set up. So we'll let everyone get settled. Okay. I think we have more trickling in, but but we'll get started here. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Business Behind the Scenes. As I mentioned, I'm Brenda Lewis, Senior Member Relations Manager at the Tulsa Regional Chamber, and I'm pleased to welcome you all today. Before we get started, I'd like to recognize our generous sponsors who make events like this possible. Our Business Behind the Scenes sponsors are m, &M Lumber, and our small business benefactors are Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, Exceptional Leaders Lab, Southwestern Payroll, Stride Bank, and TEDC Creative Capital. Speaking of our sponsors, while Whitney McKellar Stevens with M&M Lumber couldn't be here today, we did want to pass along a message from her. M&M Lumber is a locally owned full service retail lumber yard. They focus on the inventory toward the need of the contractor as well as the homeowner. They provide job site delivery and have an experienced sales staff to help you. They have a complete door shop and can take care of your special order needs, help you build a deck, update your windows, fix, fix a fence and more. M&M is located at 47th and Mingo or feel free to check them out at mmlumberco.com. That again, that's mmlumberco.com. And Whitney has been a longtime member of the chamber, the Small Business Connection, and has served in the connection during her membership. So we thank her and Eminem Lumber for their support. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, AJ Johnson, Executive Director of the Tulsa Dream Center. The Tulsa Dream Center was founded in 1999 with the purpose of filling a void in the North Tulsa community by empowering and restoring individuals and families. The Dream Center provides education, hunger, and medical support to the community, working to break people out of the cycle of poverty. As executive director, AJ provides leadership and day-to-day -day management of the organization. Apart from his full-time role, AJ also spends his free time inspiring and empowering people to be champions of change in the world. Before I hand it over, I want to encourage our audience to send questions through the Q&A feature of Zoom. We'll get to these toward the end of the presentation. AJ, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll pass it over to you. Come on, Brenda, Abby, thank you so much to all of you. I cannot see you, but I feel you. And so again, my name is AJ. I have the privilege and honor to serve as the executive director of the Tulsa Dream Center. And we tell everyone that comes to the Dream Center, all of our staff, dream no small dreams. So wherever you are today, whatever you're going through, just take a second pause right now. You may be having your salad, your tuna. I don't eat tuna. You may be having your sandwich, whatever you are. Hopefully you went to the gym this morning, so you earned your carbs. Wherever you are, just take a moment and, and dream dream of something. There's no, there's no boundaries. There's no limits because great things happen through imagination. We try to teach our boys and girls that, our staff that at the Tulsa Dream Center. If you are on staff, you must take a moment every day, every day to dream of a new idea, creativity. Um, and so we do that here at the Tulsa Dream Center. We have five main pillars. Everybody say five, five. I felt you, I felt you say five. Five main pillars, food, medical, education, sports and character development and clothing. Throughout this pandemic, everyone has been affected um, some negatively, some positively, and everything in between. I'm sure everyone has felt all type of emotions uh, throughout COVID. And so today I, I want to talk to you about not only what we do at the Tulsa Dream Center, but I want to encourage you and really stretch your mind to talk about value and hope. Everywhere you go in whatever field that you're in, I hope that you're bringing value. For example, I know that Brenda, who is our MC. January 30th is her birthday. On that same day, Franklin D. Roosevelt was born on the same day. We're talking about value. And everywhere you go, are you bringing value? Um, the Beatles, their last 
public performance was on what? January 30th. She didn't even know that. Look at her face. She did not know. So we're bringing you value even on your own birthday. On your birthday, it is National Croissant Day. So I hope that you eat more croissants on your birthday. And the meaning of your name, Brenda, is blade of a sword. Wow. She, Abby can probably attest that she is fierce. Also bringing value. Everywhere you go to Abby, of course, Abby's on the call as well with the chamber. Abby's birthday is October 15th, bringing you value. Do you know who was born on your birthday? The famous chef, Emeril. I don't know how to say his last name. Is it Legacy? Um, something. But Emeril, the famous chef, is born on your day. I Love Lucy debuted on your birthday. You got blonde hair like Lucy. You're powerful. There you go. Um, on your birthday is National Cheese Curd Day and National Bosses Day. So hopefully you like cheese curds and you're definitely a boss. I see you saying that you are a boss. The meaning of Abby's name is joy of the father. Wow, I've got three daughters. So, you know, shout out to all the, the daughters out there. That, that would mean a lot. And Abby is from Hilton Head where I'm going to South Carolina, but Myrtle Beach in just a day. So, oh, also today, talking about value today, whose birthday is it, NBA player? Blank, Blake Griffin, today was his birthday. And years ago, London B. Johnson passed the Economic Opportunity Act as his part as president on the war of poverty. Why do I share those things? Because it's important everywhere you go, every circle that you're in, how and what value are you bringing to those around you? It's important that even as you go into your businesses, it's important as you go into restaurants or wherever you go, wherever you shop, how you treat everyone is so important, whether they're the janitor, the clerk at the machine, um, you know, the waiter, the waitress, the CEO, the executive assistant, are you bringing value? And value doesn't have to cost you anything. Value can be, hey, you're powerful. Hey, you're in the right place. Man, thank you so much for your service. Everyone can bring value and hope. And I want to share with you the definition of value. The definition of value is importance, worth, and usefulness. I'm going to say that again. The definition of value is importance, worth, and usefulness. And that's what we do. We try to do in all of our programs at the Tulsa Dream Center. To break the cycle of generational poverty, we want people to first know that I'm valuable. We want people to first know that someone sees you, not what you look like, not maybe what you've been through, but someone sees who you are. And we do that, try to do that through relationship. Getting to know individuals is important. And that doesn't take a lot of time, but getting to know people is very important. Another thing that we wanna talk about today, I'd like to talk about is hope. Everybody say hope. Hope, I feel you, Abby and Brenda on mute. Hope is a feeling of expectation or desire that something for certain will happen. A feeling of expectation or a desire that something certain will happen. What are you hoping for today? Hopefully we all woke up this morning with a great hope that we're expecting something, that I'm gonna be the change that I wanna see. You know, there's a quote we say all the time at the Tulsa Dream Center, see a need and meet it, find a hurt and heal it. There are people all around that are in need of the hope and the value that are on the inside of you. And in order to bring that out and to release that, how intentional are you about growth? All of this ties in together. Getting older is automatic. I just turned 35. Um, I've got three daughters. I've got a wife as well. We've been married nine years. Shout out to all the married people. And my wife is Asian. And so we, I say we created Blasian babies, Black and Asian. Um, so we're bringing value and intentional growth to our daughters every day. I looked at, I was playing with my daughter last night. And as I was brushing her hair, I started getting teary eyed because I was like, wow, here's this, this little girl that I used to, she used to be just a little baby. And now she's a six year old and she's flinging her hair saying, daddy, do it this way. Getting older is automatic, but growth is optional. How are you growing today? What are you doing to grow to add value to yourself? Because you shouldn't be a goal. I, I've changed something this year in my, in my um, really in my lifestyle. I used to be a big goal-oriented person. Let's go for the goal. 
but I've recently changed after I heard a podcast by John Maxwell talking about be a growth oriented person. Don't focus on getting to the goal, but are you focused on the growth? Because in growth, there's no, there's no finish line. We can all continue to grow. We can all continue to go to higher levels. We can all serve better. We can all grow in our education. I'm currently getting my master's right now. And this morning at 4.30, I finished a 20 page paper. It's not due until Saturday. And this is the first time that I've ever done anything early in school. So shout out to me, pat on the back. But I knew that we were going out of town. So I had to make a decision what will I sacrifice now in order to not stress when I'm on spring break with my beautiful family? So getting, getting back, I know Abby and them are like, are you gonna talk about the Tulsa Dream Center? Yes, we are. So like Abby said, or Brenda said, our mission statement, man, we exist to break the cycle of generational poverty. And there's many ways that, that we can do that. We offer, we're, we are a, in a financial empowerment center it's through the, the Bloomberg study. And so we're teaching people the importance of financial literacy, of banking, character development. All of those things are intentional educational courses that we want to do to take someone from where they are to where they want to be or need to be in life. Unfortunately, in North Tulsa, the life expectancy rate, and many of you might know this, is 11 years shorter in North Tulsa than those in any other community. And why is that? man, that the generational poverty, that cycle that that continues. Um, and so we want to we want to break that cycle of generational poverty through all of our services. And one of the ways that we do try to offer hope is a few weeks ago, I'm sure everybody remembers when it was negative 12 degrees on a Saturday, the world is or Oklahoma is like on a shutdown. And I rallied our staff together on the phone that on a Thursday, before our Saturday grocery giveaway, our drive-through grocery giveaway. And I asked the team, I said, hey, how many feel like we should continue to have the grocery giveaway? I knew in my heart, my answer was gonna be yes. My wife said, babe, I'm gonna go with you. My kids were there. Um, long story short, all of my staff said, man, we've got to serve people. So many people are without heat. So many people are without blankets. So many people are needing food now more than ever. And so uh, what we thought was going to be a, a Saturday where most people were staying inside, we had dozens and dozens. That day, we ended up feeding over 25,000 meals just a few Saturdays ago. And so many people were crying as they were driving through the lines. There was one, one family in particular that I can think of, two moms living in a one-bedroom apartment. Um, their, their husbands had walked out on them. And so they were friends. And so they said, hey, one, one mom didn't have a place. So she opened up her place. And between them, they had 10 kids in a one bedroom. And she drove up and um, they had their kids in, in a car and it wasn't in the best condition. And she was just crying. I'm not sure how long she waited, but she said, we were one of the first ones. And she said, I just want to say thank you. And I said, no, it's our honor to serve you. And she said, you don't understand. I went to sleep after midnight researching every food bank in all of Tulsa. She lived far East Tulsa and we're in North Tulsa. And she said, you were the only one that was open today. And we were down to one canned good left for our kids. And growing up in a single parent home, 12 degrees, I started crying because that could have been us. You know, we were one decision away, one or two decisions away. And, and each and every one of you, my, you could be in the same situation as anyone else. But your choices that you make or the things that have happened to you in life, fortunately, have put you in a different situation. But for these two moms who band together as great friends to say, hey, whatever we got to do. And not only were we able to give her groceries, we had a flower company that bought roses. So every mom, every woman got roses and chocolate. And she again started crying. She said, I haven't had a rose in over three years. So again, I started crying. Again, just thinking about my mom and I've got two older sisters. I'm the youngest in my family. And I remember when my parents got divorced, my mom said, at six years old, you're the man of the house. And right there in that very moment, being the youngest, I felt the responsibility. I felt the burden. And ever since then, um, I've made a decision that I was going to give my life to serving people, especially single parent moms, especially those in need. 
And uh, after I graduated from the University of Tulsa, I moved away and took a corporate job because, you know, I thought that was the, the American dream. You graduate from college and, and you go up the corporate ladder. Um, and I worked in the food industry. My first W-2 job, yes, my first W-2 job was at 14 years old at Research, the right stuff, the right price on 71st and Sheridan. My first W-2 job after I graduated from college with, with a degree, and I was one of those students, C's get degrees. So I, I made it, I got the degree, um, and I hope, I hope you are better students than that. And I'm trying to be an A student, even in my master's course of leadership now at ORU. Um, but it's a hard course. I do have a B in one of my courses, but I'm going to try to redeem that. Long story short, um, my first W-2 job after graduating from college, I was um, a manager in a, a district manager in the food industry. And, and I loved that. And I thought, I'm going to give my life to working up the corporate ladder. But no matter how much money, no matter how big the bonuses were, there was, there was a void on the inside. There was something that I felt. And and I was, I was, you know, a driven young man out of college, former football player. So I was very competitive. I wanted our stores to produce and turn and, and they did. And I was grateful for that. At the same time, there was, there was something more. There was this, this, this missing piece. And a few years later, I found that missing piece when the Tulsa Dream Center board asked me, would I come on um, and be the executive director? And from then, that first year as executive director, I found out that my mom used to wait in line at the Tulsa Dream Center to get groceries. My first Dallas Cowboy starter jacket came from the Tulsa Dream Center. So I'm not going to cry, but I could. But when I learned that, I made that decision growing up in a single parent home. My mom just telling me on Christmas Eve after I finished my first year as executive director, Son, I used to wait in line at the Tulsa Dream Center. She's crying and bawling. And in that moment, I knew that's what I've been missing. I've been missing the, this, this drive, this, this, this something was on the inside that was compelling me to reach people. That it's not just about money. It's not just about the cars that we drive, the homes that we live in, but it's about hope. Everybody in our world today, no matter how, I, I, I know, I know, unfortunately, I know rich people that, that, are unfulfilled. And I know people that don't have as much that are totally fulfilled because it's about what's the value on the inside? What's the hope? How are you serving? That's the most important thing. When you make a decision to serve, when you make a decision to give, it, it causes you to give outside of yourself. I heard a quote, anything great comes outside of our comfort zone. I'm going to say that again. Anything great comes outside of our comfort zone. So whether that's waking up at 3.30 or 4 in the morning when, of course, those blankets try to keep you down, are you going to get outside of that comfort zone to study? Or maybe you've got a dream or a hope or a desire or a company, something dormant on the inside of you. I want to encourage you to pull that dream off the shelf of your heart, pull that dream off the shelf of your mind, blow off the dusk and make a decision that I'm going to take one step. Every single day, what's one thing you can do to get closer to that goal? Is it reading for 15 minutes? Is it a podcast while you're driving? I love to listen to music, but I've made a decision in the month of March, no music in the car. That is going to be either my homework podcast or um, my homework audiobook. I should be reading it, but I bought the audiobooks. I hope my professor's not on here. Or I was going to do something to add value to me, so that way I can be a better father, a better man, a better husband, a better leader. And I know that if I add value to myself, it's going to automatically come out when I add value to others. And so I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, what are you doing to add value to yourself? What are you doing to add value to others? Because especially today, as we're still in this, this pandemic, some states, the mask mandates have lifted. But even before masks were mandatory, we all can at times live behind a mask, a mask of shame, a mask of oppression, a mask of sickness, a mask of, of a secret that no one knows. We all at times in our life have lived behind a mask. 
But what would you do if you finally just took off that mask? Who would you be on your job if you didn't have to try to get this group to like you, if you weren't striving? What would you do if you didn't have that mark on you? Whatever it is, I just want to, I, I don't know why I keep just sensing to just encourage you. I know this, hopefully this behind the scenes is adding value and I'm looking to Abby and Brenda, the smiles or tears, but I just, I just want to encourage you out there. Um, my life, what did I do prior to, to Dream Center? Um, no, I don't feel like I should go there. Everything you want or need is outside of your comfort zone. That is a nugget that I hope you take with you today. Wherever your comfort zone is, whatever field that you are, man, how can you help someone else get that promotion that you want? How can you go back to school? Maybe it's for someone to go back to school. Maybe it's to start that business. Um, how are you intentional on a daily best basis with your time, your treasure, and your talents? The three T's in life, time, treasure, and talents. We all have those. In college, I was a part of an association and their, their motto was lift as you climb. Lift as you climb, as you're on your way up to that next level, as you're, you're pursuing that goal, you're pursuing that bonus, are you lifting someone else to go with you or, are you, or is it all about you? Today, it's very easy to be so self-consumed. You know, we've got, we've got our phones that try to keep us distracted and we've got our own lives, but what are you doing outside of your circle? And really, if, even if you have the circle, how are you challenging that circle to give outside. We've got a lot of amazing opportunities here at the Tulsa Dream Center on Saturdays. Every Saturday, I'll feed you breakfast and lunch at the Tulsa Dream Center. We are, you know, we haven't had a Saturday in 2020 that we've done, 2021, that we've done less than 15,000 meals on a Saturday. We've, our drive-through experience is from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We've got a volunteer meeting and breakfast at 8.30. And really what we have found is people from all walks of life drive through line. I think about Maria. Maria pulled up a few Saturdays ago. She had a, a really fancy car. Um, and, and I was shocked to see a, a car like this in our line. So I went over and I said, ma'am, what does this mean to you? Um, and she just began to cry and weep. She had her mom in the passenger seat. And uh, she said, I lost my job in the pandemic. We spent all of our savings. I ended up getting cancer. And rather than waiting to another job, I didn't know when I was gonna get, she spent all of her money on medicine and chemo treatments. And she said, I'm embarrassed to be here, but I'm selling my car tomorrow because this is it. This is all that we have. And in that moment, I thought, wow, let us never judge a book by its cover again because we never know what a person's walking through. That's why your words of encouragement to people, a smile, is it doesn't cost you anything, but you never know what people are going through. So be aware, be on the lookout on a daily basis for whom can I encourage? Who can I add value to? Because I know that if I can make a deposit into someone's life, man, someone's gonna come along and be a deposit back to my life. And even if they don't, it's like a seed. Seeds grow in healthy soil. Seeds grow in a healthy environment. And it'll eventually grow. If you look at it every single day, it may look like on the surface, nothing is happening. But on the inside, underground, something is happening with that seed. And the same goes with your life. The moment that you, you stay consistent on a daily basis, the moment you keep studying, the moment you keep spending five to 10 minutes every day going closer towards your goal, eventually something great is gonna happen to you. And so it's been my honor to, to be a part of this um, behind the scenes connection. My name is AJ. Um, I would love to serve you. I would love to partner with you or give you a tour of the Tulsa Dream Center. I, I'm gonna say my cell phone. I don't know if that's normal or allowed, Brenda, but um, my cell phone number is 918. 812-4049. I'll say it again, 918-812-4049. You can call, well, text is actually easier and faster today, but you can call or text me or my email address is aj at the Tulsa Dream Center.org, aj at Tulsa Dream Center.org. You can go on our Facebook, Instagram, or Aaron Johnson on LinkedIn. 
I would be honored to serve you. If you've got a, a company or small business and your employees, you need a, a serve, a give back opportunity. Just like the chamber exists to serve businesses, we exist to serve people and, and Tulsa Dream Center. And so we would love to partner with you. Brenda, Abby, I am so grateful for this opportunity. I'm honored to be, you know, the chamber's a big deal and we're just the Tulsa Dream Center. So I'm honored to be a part of this journey with you ladies and um, enjoy your croissants and cheese curds because your birthdays are on those days. Thank you so much. Thank you, AJ. I thank you first for sharing your story with us and um, being inspiring. Sometimes we need a little bit of motivation, right? It doesn't last every day, so we need it a little every day. Um, I want to encourage our audience members to submit questions again through the Q&A function of Zoom. I do have some questions that I want to get to AJ, so I'm hoping that you'll stick around. Um, how do you stay inspired? What is it that keeps you inspired and motivated? Good question. Um, you know, inspiration can come and go, just like the weather changes. Um, you can be inspired for a moment um, and motivated for a moment, but it'll eventually fade, just like everything else. What I have found in my personal life is consistency. When I feel like it, get up early. When I don't feel like it, get up early. And for me, I, I found the early mornings, um, of course, with three kids, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and an eight month old that, that looks like a one year old cause she, she's, a, she's a professional eater. Um, but for me, what I have found is that consistency of early morning study, that consistency of early morning adding value to myself, that consistency of early morning going to the gym, that routine and, and quiet time. Um, and I started it probably, I'd probably say in August, I started spending five minutes a day in complete silence. And, and I started it with 30 seconds. It's actually hard. I would encourage anyone, if you want to grow in your self-discipline, try to sit quiet and silent for one minute a day and then grow into that. So I'm now up to five minutes where I turn my phone off and I have a, a notepad and a pen in front of me. And I set my, I have a, an office clock um, a timer that I set for five minutes. And when that goes off, I write the first thing that pops in my head. And what I found for me is that that solitude, that quietness, man, it, it rejuvenates me. Some of my greatest ideas have come from that. Um, and we've implemented some of those ideas and how we reach people at the Tulsa Dream Center. So consistency is the key and, and giving yourself a command and sticking to it, you know, getting up early, you know, going to sleep. So consistency is the long and short answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, we had a nice comment come through saying just thank you for the inspiring message. Um, how many people do you serve each day? So today is our um, grocery giveaway service. Every Tuesday we serve, we have so many different programs. So that's a, that's a hard question. But every day we have our medical program going on. And typically we see about 12 to 18 patients there. Um, and our after school program, we have over 100 kids even now. And at one point we had over 200 kids. We were a hope center uh, facility where we boot um, and we were a hope center facility. And so we boosted up our Wi Fi for children to come get tutor help every single day. And at one point during COVID, we were serving 1,200 meals to our boys and girls and delivering them breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two snacks every single day um, to our boys and girls. And so every day there's different programs. We have our morning that are dedicated for our adults and our afternoons from 12 p.m. on dedicated to our children. So that way there's a, there's a distinct separation. But Hundreds of people every single day get, get served here at the Tulsa Dream Center. So we need your help and your partnership. That's a good segue, actually, because another question to follow up to that was what kind of programs do you offer in North Tulsa? Yeah, so uh, our bread and butter, our three main pillars are food, medical, and education. Um, in our food program, we, we have an adult feeding program and children feeding program. 
And then we have our drive through grocery experience every single Saturday. I'd encourage you to look at our Facebook or Instagram and you can see kind of the impact. Not only are we giving away food, but we give away a mask and hand sanitizer. We had a lady that was crying when we gave her paper towels and napkins and toilet paper because she would go to the gas stations and anytime she would go to a fast food restaurant, she would ask for extra napkins because that's what she was using at home to get her through. Um, so a lot of great serving activities. Everyone's in a mask. If you need gloves, everyone has gloves. Uh, we have a clothing room as well that's open four days a week where individuals and families and even we've, we're serving a lot of moms with babies right now, which is my passion of my heart, single moms. Um, with baby clothes. So food, medical education, sports and character development. We just finished a, um, between nine public schools, we just finished a third and fourth and fifth and sixth basketball tournament. Um, and the winning school gets to keep the trophy at their school for a year. Um, so food, medical education, sports, sports and character development and clothing. And within all five of those pillars, there's so many tremendous serving opportunities. You kind of touched on this a little bit on wanting to work with uh, with our partners here and small businesses love helping in the community. And that's something that I get a lot actually, how can I help? So a question for you is what advice would you give someone who is wanting to get involved or partner with a local nonprofit? Man, I would definitely say for your employees, find something that where you can see the need, where you can see the impact. Because what is that gonna do for your staff? Man, that's gonna bring them closer together if they had an opportunity to serve a senior citizen at a, at a food bank, or if they had an opportunity to repair someone's house or fix someone's car. To see that directly impact someone is gonna do something on the inside of you that really will cause you to say, man, when's the next time we're gonna do this? And uh, whether you're a small company or a big company, I'd encourage you to lay out whether it's once a quarter, you know, that you're going to serve together um, or give your employee. A lot of great companies have incentives that if you serve five hours, you know, you can throughout a year or 12 hours that they will allow you to schedule two hours throughout the workday or even one hour throughout the workday where it's that company giving back. And I think that's so important. Um, to as a company, don't just be a consumer. How are you being a contributor to, to North Tulsa, East Tulsa, West Tulsa, South Tulsa, to Oklahoma as a whole? I would encourage wherever you are as the you know director, admin, whatever it is, how can you add value and serve? There are some so many amazing nonprofits. The Chamber is a great resource to find nonprofits um, that you can partner with. So I definitely would encourage everyone serve together if you can. You're segueing my questions really well, actually, AJ. Um, how has your involvement in the chamber helped you personally and or professionally? Well, I would say the chamber was probably in our, at the very beginning of the pandemic, um, someone from the chamber's office reached out because a company within the chamber had an excessive amount of masks and gloves and they knew that the Tulsa Dream Center was continuing to serve people. And so they, you know, the chamber, thank you so much, helped us get, I wanna say at that time, it was about 1,200 to 2,000 masks and gloves as we were serving. And this, is, this was early on when like masks were gold, like people were selling masks for like $10 a mask, it was crazy. And they were in 95s, they weren't like the bootleg ones, they were the top notch, good mask and that meant so much for us because every penny continues to go directly into serving the needs of the community not just in North Tulsa because we have people driving from all around and so the chamber a big thank you there um, we were on a few different emails of other nonprofits that were doing COVID related response items and so that got exposure for so many nonprofits like us. A little bit on COVID, how did your business plan pivot to remain successful during COVID? Oh, wow. So we have our facility here is 50,000 square feet and uh, I'm playing with this. I would say that I'm proud that I did this, but I didn't do this. 
I'm still trying to do this. I have another one. Uh, I'll put it down. It's distracting me. So I remember the first week um, or the second week in March. And, you know, it was kind of the beginning of America really pivoting and changing. And we had, we had a food program three times a week. And this particular day, we, it was a Saturday. And we said, hey, everything in our, warehouse, in our food warehouse, in our refrigerator, in our freezer, everything on the racks, why don't we just make a decision that we're going to, this is with the staff, that we're going to have a food drive and create this drive through grocery experience. And little did we know that seven miles worth of cars would show up on a Saturday that the chief of police would call Tim Newton, who's our director of programs, and myself and say, I need to send traffic control because we're getting so many calls of people cutting through neighborhoods trying to get it. And we weren't prepared for that. And so when we saw that, we knew we've got to pivot because there's a lot of great need. And so this, this Saturday is our one year of doing COVID strong food relief. And so many amazing companies have said, hey, we want to come alongside. And so for months, all we did was food. And that's really catapulted us to go into different spaces uh, and reach different people that we might not have ever done so. There are a lot of things that the Tulsa Dream Center does, a lot of things that you have to manage. And so as someone who moves a million miles a minute, how uh, and has many priorities, what do you do to stay organized? Great question. That morning time is so key for me. Um, and I try to twice a day um, make sure that I am tackling the most important issues, even if there's only two things, two things in the morning that I try to tackle and two things in the afternoon, because there's there is, like you said, a million things that need to happen or a million things that need to get done. And if I focus on trying to accomplish all of them in one day, I'll always fail. And so one for me, it's being okay to say it can wait until tomorrow. That was a hard lesson to learn, um, but COVID has helped me say, no matter the voicemails, no matter the text messages, no matter the emails, there's always tomorrow. And so really freeing myself to say, giving myself permission to not be disappointed or to not be too hard on myself when I, when I feel like I didn't, I gotta get more stuff done, you know, for the sake of my marriage, for the sake of my sanity, for the sake of my children, I've gotta turn it off. And so for me, I have found every single day turning my phone off for a period of time or leaving my phone in a, in a room in my house and not going back to it for a few hours it has helped my mind. You know, we're, we're in an, an engaged overdrive society. I don't want to be wired by my cell phone or controlled by the next ding on my phone. And so I had to unlearn, even in the madness of COVID, the importance of just being quiet, the importance of slowing down, and the importance of getting done what I could and the rest taking care of the next day. It's really hard to do. We know that life too well here at the chamber. I know all of the staff on can vouch for that. Um, a really nice comment again that um, they love the Tulsa Dream Center and you will not be sorry if you volunteer there. So thank you for that comment. Two more questions. What kind of donations do you accept? Any in-kind items like clothing or food donations? Oh, that's my man, Rocky. Come on, Rocky. I love you, baby. <laughs> Rocky is the man. Um, if you don't know Rocky, find him on LinkedIn, on Facebook. He's one of the greatest connectors. Really, the chamber needs to hire Rocky. He's your ambassador and you didn't even know. Um, love you, Rocky. You and your wife. Hello. Um, what was the question? Um, donations? Yes. What donations do you all uh, accept? Do you accept clothing? We do. So um, in all five of our pillars, food, medical, education, sports and character development and, and clothing, we accept clothing items. If you leave your clothes at a spiffy after 90 days, you might see someone at the Tulsa Dream Center wearing them. So we want to encourage you to leave your clothes at the cleaners. 
Um, but you can also drop them off here at the Tulsa Dream Center. Um, we have families that if someone was walking through a medical situation and they got better, they donate medical supplies. Um, if they have an excess of basketballs or footballs, baseball, soccers, that you so anything you you can donate to that's in good quality. Don't give us stuff that maybe smells like mothballs or you know is yucky because we've had people do that and we throw it in the trash. Because um, we want to give people quality items, not just junk, not junk. Um, and of course, you can donate financially at the Tulsa Dream Center uh, .com. Um, You can do that as well. OK, last question. What are you most excited about for this year? Wow. You know, I've not. that's a great question. Um, I guess one, I'm most excited if it's true that the mask mandates will be lifted. Uh, I think I, I read that. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, June, July, August, at some point, the new normal will look different. COVID was a new normal, you know, living behind a mask. Um, what am I, I'm most excited right now about the new grocery store that is opening in North Tulsa coming in a few weeks. I can't say the date, but Rose Washington will probably say the date as she's the chairman. Uh, Dream Center and myself are in great partnership with Rose on the grocery store in North Tulsa. I want to encourage every person, every person, you want to see North Tulsa economically and financially uh, prosper, shop at this North Tulsa grocery store. It's Oasis Fresh Market opening soon, soon and very soon. Uh, and the chamber will be there and more information to come. But that's probably what I would say, one of the things I'm most excited about. And I told my daughter told me, my five-year-old daughter told me that we're gonna have a baby by Christmas and my wife is not currently pregnant. So maybe she knows something that I don't know, but I'm excited. I told my wife, I'm ready for it, baby number four. And she said, no, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Trying to refrain from laughing too much. That is just too precious. Um, and if any of you want to learn more about Tulsa Dream Center, I know AJ passed along his cell phone, but you can also check more out on their website, tulsadreamcenter.org. And it's also in the chat. Thank you, Abby, for um, including that. And um, thank you to everyone. Thank you, AJ, for spending your afternoon with us and, and those of you that joined us online for joining us today. And thank you again to our generous sponsors for making today's event possible. At this time, I'd like to ask everyone to answer the following survey question about today's event. On a scale of one to 10, how did today's event meet your expectations? One being it did not meet your expectations and 10 being it 100% did. We'll give you all a moment here to answer that question. Just waiting on a few more. Thank you all. Your feedback um, actually helps us shape future connection programming. So thank you in advance for your participation. Okay. I hope everyone enjoyed today's events. We do have a few upcoming events I'd like to quickly share before we adjourn. Our first C-Level Lunch of the Year will be on March 30th at noon. This lunch is for our business owners, CEOs, and presidents only. And the second installment of the Small Business Virtual Networking will be on, on April 22nd at 10.30 in the morning. You can view these and all of the Chamber's upcoming events on tulsachamber.com slash events. Again, tulsachamber.com slash events. Thank you again, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful day.